European College of Neuropsychopharmacology is the perfect combination of basic and clinical research. So it's a good opportunity for clinicians to present their data and to let them know to basic researchers and other clinicians of also. also. Also communicating with all other clinicians and the industry also is here so we can know about the, the new drugs and the future of the new drugs, the new pathways they are looking for. I've been involved in schizophrenia research for many, many years in the pharmacological field and in the genetics. Recently I moved to Paris and I changed my field of interest and I moved to addictive dis disorders and uh, especially behavioral addiction. And as I was work, I've been working for many years on uh, deviant sexual behavior. So I'm now interested in sexual addiction, which is very often associated to deviant sexual behavior. And in the past I was an endocrinologist so I know a little bit about antiandrogen treatment, so that's why some colleagues ask me to use antiandrogens in sexual deviant um, behaviors and in sex offenders uh, a long time ago, that was like 25 years ago. So I had both an interest in schizophrenia and in sexual deviant behavior. So now I moved to addictive disorders and to sexual addiction recently. Because you are very much involved in schizophrenia, we had a large cohort of schizophrenic patients. So now we have to restart a new cohort of patients. So we had the opportunity with the French government, the French Ministry of Health, to get money last year to gather a national cohort of sex offenders with many colleagues in France, all around France. So we we'll hope that we will have like 300 sex offenders by the end of next year. We are several colleagues around uh, the world because one is from the US, another one is from Israel and the last one is from the UK, Valérie Vaughan, Mark Potenza and Aviv Weinstein. And they are, all of them are interested in addictive behaviors. So we talk about behavioral addiction in general with the special example of gambling for two of the, the talks. And then now we talk about sexual addiction, especially treatment pharmacological treatment of sexual addiction. And the last talk will be from Valérie Vaughan about the relationship between compulsive behavior, impulsive behavior, and sexual hypersexuality. Because it's not very well categorized until now. And it could be compulsive, impulsive, or addictive behavior. That's not completely clear. That's probably why the American Association didn't mention sexual addiction as an addiction yet in the five version of the DSM. I was very interested yesterday about the lecture about uh, ketamine and the role of ketamine and, and the, the great interest of ketamine in mood disorders, which is really something very, very new and there is a very quick onset, which is very new for us because we are used to wait for weeks, sometimes months, to get the clinical efficacy of a medication. The first one is to be, to be close to basic science, which is the future of psychiatry. Uh, the second is to be very European, because uh, we have a lot to learn about our colleagues from other countries in Europe and all around the world, but this is a European Congress. And the third one is that we lack definitely biomarkers in psychiatry, and the future of psychiatry is to find biomarkers and to be closer to personalized medicine. But first of all, to use personalized medicine, we need biomarkers, which is very often used in oncology, but it, which is not used, not at all, in psychiatry at the moment. So this is the future, I think. And s this morning we had a session about, a lecture about endophenotypes in, in schizophrenia, and that was very interesting, because they found something very interesting in babies. We, we, we have been working for many years on this endophenotype, especially the P15 schizophrenia, and, and that was very difficult because we were involved in, in the genetic field and we couldn't find any single gene involved in P50. But what he showed this morning about the fact that in babies they could differentiate those who probably are at high risk and those who are not, which is really the future of psychiatry. And that was from uh, Friedman. Robert Friedman. And the other thing also that I didn't mention is the 
the close relationship we should have with neurologists because I was astonished this morning to learn that they have now monoclonal antibodies which might be efficient in reducing the amyloid deposition which is the key thing in Alzheimer's disease. So they are far in advance as compared to us. But it's easier because they, are, they have something abnormal in the brain, which is not the case in schizophrenia, something that they can see very easily. So that makes a big difference.